Irene, a year ago when we met, you were taking care of your husband who was battling really serious stage four colon cancer. You weren't in a good place. No, no, Gail, I wasn't. And it had been a it had been a long struggle. And a year ago, it been we we were just on a path, and it's three years down the road, and every day, every day got difficult and changes had to be made. My life was changing. He was needing more care. My kids were changing. They needed attention. They were losing their father. I, I didn't know how to deal with it. Did you find somebody you could talk to? Somebody in the same I boat? I did. I didn't really know, know Debbie and know, know her circumstances. Um, but we were both in the caregiving kind of a, um, life. And she knew exactly what I was feeling because she had felt many of the same feelings. Mm. She had walked the path that I was walking and yeah. she knew what I needed. And I think I was smart enough to, to listen and follow her. Debbie, when we met a year ago, you had your hands full. Mm -hmm. You were running a, a big business of your own, mm -hmm. construction business. You had a mom who was really, really deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Your dad was having cognitive problem. Your husband had just been diagnosed with Parkinson's. Did you need a rest? Oh yes. <laughs> I think everybody should be willing to give themselves permission to take a break. Mm. Because if you don't, the resentment builds up and your ability to, to do loving caregiving is compromised. Yeah. When I was on this break with Irene, during that week, my mother ended up getting an infection that killed her a month later. And coming back from retreat and having to confront that, all the guilt came rolling over me, but I was able to flip it. I was able to realize that I would not have been able to care for her lovingly, to be present with her during this horrible, horrible experience that we went through together if I hadn't had that break. Yeah. So really it was a gift. I had a doctor actually prescribe for me a week away. He said, <laughs> you must go. I am ordering you to go. What have you done to take care of yourselves better since we went on retreat? I joined a hiking club. Good. Um, I, I'm a, going to the ocean and walking along the beach. I get incredible energy. I try to take that, if it's an hour a day for myself, it's so important. Recently I started writing in a journal and that has been incredibly cathartic. You get unstuck when you write. One of the things I've found is I don't want to go home alone to an empty bed. I've been traveling <laughs> the last three months. We're going through the same thing. I'm, I don't like going home. Isn't it? Irene and I are together almost every weekend. <laughs> well, we're free birds now. Absolutely. So that's, that's the positive. That's so why not fly? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm doing fun things. You decided to change your life. When I was packing up my parents, I found all these crates and boxes of letters that my mother had saved, and all the memories started to come back, and I realized it was really time for me to sit down and start to write my story about my childhood in Africa. It started as something I was doing for my mother, and it very quickly became something I was doing for myself. But you were fortunate. Your husband was totally on board. And that's, I think, the real definition of love, is when somebody empowers you to be the best that you can be. One of those last few weeks of Tom's life, Tom was talking to his best friend, and I was cleaning up the bedroom, and all I remember hearing is, Irene is a wonderful wife. I'm just so proud of her. She, mm -hmm. It's just really important to hear those words out of his mouth. I, I go back and I, I hear those words mm -hmm. now. When Irene and I went away for our spiritual retreat, there was a labyrinth. I was all by myself mm -hmm. and I was walking the labyrinth and suddenly my mother was there with me and I realized in that moment that I had never grieved for her. i have been so busy since she died doing that silent meditation and being by myself and listening to the birds and the sounds of nature because my mother loved nature and she was really, really she with me there. and it was so comforting. Irene, you walked the labyrinth too? I started walking and I talked to my husband and tell him how the kids were doing mm. and how I was doing. Mm. And he was there. As I got to the center of the labyrinth, I got there sooner than I even thought. I thought, okay, what do I do now? And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take the journey back around the labyrinth. And I continued talking to him. And when I was finished talking to him, I was at the end and I felt cleansed. I felt good. When you walked out of that, your journey was done. It was done. More importantly, I, I had the energy 
to do what I needed to do. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a yeah. walk! Okay! okay. <laughs> Wonderful! Oh, God, you are oh. all so great! <laughs>